Hey everyone, welcome to 3D Tutor. In this quick update, I'm excited to show you what's new with the Meadowgrass Geometry Node setup. We've added more customization options, giving you greater controls over scalability and angle tilt, making it easier than ever to adapt the grass to any environment. Everything is now updated for Blender 4.4, and we've also cleaned up the layout with better organized tabs, so it's much easier to navigate and tweak your settings. In this video, I'll walk you through how to fully make use out of Geometry Node setup, so you can get most out of it in your scenes, whether it's for games or stylus renders. And at the end of it all, I'll show you how you can make use out of it to animate the growth of it as well. So let's dive right in. To start off, I'm going to show you how to make use out of it on a plain mesh. If you want to grab this entire foliage setup, you can use Ctrl C, Ctrl V onto your own personal project, and that's going to put it into that project easily. And right away, what we'll notice is that we can just put our terrain geometry node shader like so, and that's going to give us a nice grass. On top of that, to have even a better look, you can do so by going onto vertex paint and painting in the detail. So it's going to give us a gray default type of a setup. But if we go between R, G, and B, or red, green, and blue, we're going to be able to texture in our own variation. So right now, red is going to give us a nice green, luscious type of a look, like so. If you want, we can change this to green. And that's going to give us, if we lower the strength, it's going to give us the ability to blend in the values nicely with our other pieces, like so. And this type of shader comes default with our meadow. So you're able to nicely get some really amazing variations in your grass type of terrain. And of course, finally, we also have a blue, which is going to give us another variation of our grass. So this is more of a yellowy type of a grass. Again, great for the overall setup of the rains. And after that, we can talk a little bit about the geometry node. So once you have it in within your project, this piece over here, you can basically reuse it on any type of a mesh. So for this one, I'm going to just add a geometry node and select the meadow like that. And right away, we're going to get this sort of a result. So all of it is going to be nicely populated for you and properly set, but you can take it a step further and do additional customization. For Sardis, we have a seed, which allows us to change up the randomization spawn of our meadow. We also have weight paint, and I'll show you how to use that right away, actually. If you click on this button over here, we're able to make use out of the weight paint. We can then go ahead and create ourselves a new weight paint information. So let's go on to this tab over here. And right away, this platform already has weight paint. If it doesn't have it, we can create our own one by just clicking on the plus symbol over here in a vertex group. And we can even rename it, so call it grass or something of the sort. Then find that information within a weight paint. And once you have it connected, we can start painting in our own grass within all the areas that we want. So just like that, we're able to basically place any information that we want for this meadow setup. Now, let's talk about the settings themselves in terms of what we are able to do with this meadow. So for starters, we have collection. So this collection basically allows us to grab the collection pieces of already existing um, meadow. So you can fully customize the meshes. If we have a look at the collections, we can see that this is what gets brought up and all of these pieces are being used and they're fully customizable from within the setup. If I was to change one of these uh, pieces, I'd be able to see it, the changes within the meadow setup. So that makes it easy and nice to use for the overall scene. Again, all of it is already set up for you. You don't need to worry about that. So let's go ahead over our settings. First things first, we have a scale for the meadow itself, for the grass of it. Uh, let's go ahead and change the scale. So this allows us to change the overall scale of the grass in terms of its size. We also have the ability to scale randomly 
the setup so that gives us more of a natural look instead of a uniform type of a setup for a grass this might look better for more of a wild grass and whatnot which is an option you might go for furthermore we have scalability for z value so this allows us to quickly create uh, additional options for well scaling the grass in z value this piece is great for animation which i'm going to show you in a bit uh, now as for the density we have two controls we have viewport density and render density these densities vary because when rendering maybe we want a more luscious more dense type of grass but when working with modeling if we have a look at it and if i was to hide the previous grass it is maybe uh, a little bit too much sometimes so what you can do for a viewport we can lower this down to something like a hundred and it's going to give us less of a density but all in all when rendering it's still going to give us that default 500 uh, density so all in all it's a really good option to make use of another option is going to be the max surface angle what's nice about this geometry node is that it allows you to basically place the grass the meadow and whatnot based on an angle surface so if we have a look at it the max surface angle right now is 68 degrees if we start lowering this down it starts taking off the grass from the side if we start increasing it it'll start bringing us over maybe i'll just put this back to 500 so we can see it a little bit better and just like that we're able to control where the grass grows additionally we have surface angle randomizer so this allows us to make sure that it doesn't give us just a straight edge and we're able to increase or lower that uh, variation in between the angles giving us more organic type of a look additionally what we have is a z alignment so this is going to allow the grass to either grow uh, vertically up or it's going to allow you to place it based on the angle of your mesh if i was to increase this all the way you'll notice that maybe it's a little bit hard to see let me just lower down the upper option z alignment allows you to basically tell the grass to grow either based on the mesh or based on a world position and anything in between also can be adjusted essentially giving you a real nice control over the grass now as for tilt randomization what we have here is it's going to allow you to create a more natural type of looking grass just by simply tilting this grass over here and you can make sure that it either looks maybe more uniform like this for a lawn grass and whatnot or you can randomize it a little bit more like so and it's going to look more organic overall so what do we do about the additional parameters in terms of flowers well for saras we have stems stems will allow you to basically create these stems over here and you can either disable them by just setting the viewport density to zero so it's only going to give you a grass a luscious grass for your terrain or if you start enabling it it's going to give us well a very nice type of flowers we also have scale so the scale will allow us to scale the stem upwards like so if we want this to be put above the grass we can totally do so again we also have scale randomness so that's going to give us more organic type of a look in terms of the scaling the viewport density render density will do as i mentioned previously the spawn amount of the flowers then we have surface angle randomizer again same as the grass will allow you to spawn closer to the angles and then we have the mesh radius mesh radius will allow us to give us a more thicker type of a stem or we can do it a little bit thinner so that's based on the stylized effect you're going for then as for the top flowers themselves we have the flower patterns over here again we're using collection so it is fully customizable you can uh, remove from the collection any types of flowers you want and you're going to get a specific flower so for example if i want only a let's say a white flower in our field i can go ahead and take this out of the way i can click m and just move it to a collection base itself so it's not going to be in the flower collection and that way if we have a look at our meadow type of terrain we're only going to get those white flowers so again the customization is up to you and you can make use out of this to create whatever feel you're trying to go for then of course we have the scale of the petals and scale randomness again for those extra customization pieces if you want to 
make it a more seen of a stylized organic and again up to you based on your environment based on the setup you're going for uh, finally we have leaves leaf customization again it's going to start off by collection so that's going to allow you to place the stylus custom leaves and if you want the custom leaves to be only specific type we can also do so so all of these leaves over here within the collection they're being used by the flower and if we want to only use specific leaves so for example only these leaves over here and not these leaves we can move these by clicking m going on to collection and just moving them out of collection like so or perhaps maybe I want to keep this leaf in the collection. I can just drag it back in or using M up to you to put it back in the collection. So now we have those three leaves over here. And if we look at the meadow that we have over here, now it's only going to use those specific leaves. Again, the customization is really up to you, but whichever way you want to go for, whichever type of style you're looking for, really amazing tool to make use out of. Uh, the scale, scale randomness allows you to scale up the leaves, make them small, make them large. The minimum and ma maximum count basically allows us to spawn or control the spawn amount of the leaves per each uh, stem. So right now you can see between two and four essentially going to give us between two and four leaves on each one of those um, stems. If I set this to one on both minimum and maximum, it's only going to spawn one leaf in each one of those um, sections maybe it's a little bit hard to see so there we go i can upscale them and you can see those leaves like so now if you want to do animation you can totally do so i am right now in a layout mode and let's go on to frame 120 like so then we're going to change the scale for the grass as well as add a z scale as well so scale z add let's go ahead and click an i then we're going to change the scale for stems, scale randomness for stems as well. We're going to change the flower scale for both the scale and randomness, as well as the leaves like so. Once we have all of these settings on, we can go to frame zero and we can change all of these values to zero just like that, like so. And let's not forget to insert a keyframe for each one of them. So I'm, again, I'm clicking I to insert a keyframe while hovering over my mouse over those parameters. And just like that, it's going to change the color. We will now know that it has a keyframe. And if we start clicking play, we'll see the growth of those nice meadow fields. So that's going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching and happy modeling, everyone.